What's the best part, would you say, of being a mom? <laughs> Not everybody. <laughs> yeah. I'd say it's the unconditional love. Like, no matter how much I mess up or think I mess up, they're always, like, right there and just, like, I forgive you, Mom, you know, with a hug and a kiss. And if I'm feeling down, they kind of pick up on that and kind of run up and want to hug and cuddle no matter what. So what do you guys think um, the best part of being a mom is? I think for me is feel knowing from the spiritual perspective that God trusted me yeah. to raise them. Like I doubt myself all the time. Just the fact that he has that much faith in me to say, here, I'm giving you my people, my, you know, I'm like, Woo -hoo -hoo. Uh, so that's huge for me. Sometimes I look at them like today, Aaron came to the and here comes Aaron in the middle of the zoo. Um, how do you get germs in your body? And I'm like, <laughs> well, um, <laughs> no, but, you know, so the lady, you know, encouraged me and said, you know, that's the making of a doctor. Just keep, you know, whatever introduce And just that, that the curiosity and that it's me who is now in charge of trying to give them what they need. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's the best thing ever. Even when I mess up and I do that a lot, it's just... I think for me, it's seeing how God uses my kids to teach me about God's love for us. I remember when Malia was about 18 months old, um, we had a really bad habit of putting her to bed with a cup because she otherwise, wouldn't, like she didn't take a pacifier, so the cup was her pacifier. Uh, and she woke up in the middle of the night and she's screaming, crying. So I go in and she's got her empty cup and she's sucking on this cup trying to get something out of it. And I said, baby, it's empty. Do you want mommy to fill it? And she just kept screaming. So I'm in for the cup and she's got a death grip on it. She won't let go. So I said, baby, I can't fill the cup unless you let go of the empty cup. I'll go fill it. You know, we have the things to fill it. I'll go fill it. You got to let go. And in that moment, God spoke to me and he goes, how many times do you hold on to the empty cup when I can so readily, willingly fill it if you just yeah. let go? Yeah. I feel like for me, the best part of being a mom has just been knowing that kind of like what you said, Elizabeth, about God trusting me, but knowing that I'm kind of like the vessel for this incredible human being that God designed to be on earth and that just watching them grow into who they were meant to be and kind of the things that they're interested in and just watching them develop is like the coolest thing ever. And I feel like selfishly, I just love being a mom for that reason, actually. So everyone has always told us when we were pregnant and we were having these children that they're all different. Um, and they really are, but it's so cool to see them grow up and see how different they really are and how genetics plays a part and how just personality plays a part. Um, little pieces of me and little pieces of Kevin. Um, I think that's my favorite part is to see them, you know, sadly take some of my bad qualities, but they also do take some of my good qualities and um, seeing them grow up and having conversations with like Bailey and Caleb. I, I love as they get older, um, being relatable and those kind of things. What everybody said is, uh, for me, kind of encompasses all of that. But it's also, um, right now, is growing patience. I thought I needed patience when they were younger, but I think I need a lot of patience now, too, that they're getting older and just trying to be uh, a picture of Christ in front of them so they can have something to model. Mm. What's the worst part of being a mom? For me, it's seeing my failures mirrored back at me through mm. my kids when I mess mm. up and, you know, I see them do it and you're like, okay, that, that totally came from me. That's something I have to work on. Mm. I think it's the constant, like, worrying, like, even when I know I don't have to. Mm. Like, like, start, like, at the very beginning, like, when you first decide to be a mom, you're worrying about, will we get pregnant? It's mm. like, when do you get pregnant? It's like, okay, is everything going to turn out okay? And then, baby's born and it's like worrying about if everything's going right are you following all the right guidelines and then you know toddlerhood am I disciplining them correctly now it's like am I teaching them correctly with all this quarantine schooling and are they really gonna turn out okay am I you know even like if you get a break like if you go get a couple hours to yourself I'm still there like worrying about what's going on at home mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And then I'm sure even, you know, I'm sure even my parents now are worried, you know, worrying about us and whether or not we're okay. And, you know, just kind of, you know, it's like, you know, you, you have that like trust that God is there and taking care of them, but you still can't help but worry about what's going on and are you doing everything correctly? That too. Yeah. I didn't, yeah. When, you know, everybody wants to be, well, no, I shouldn't say everybody, but when you first find out you're pregnant, you're, you, you are that worried about everything and you're, um, I just didn't realize that responsibility of growing a human and then having a human and training a human and um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's overwhelmingly worrisome sometimes for certain. I feel like yeah. for me, like the worst part of being a parent has been just not really having all the answers. And then when they're mm -hmm. upset about something or I feel like I don't really have the right response and then I dig deep and I still really don't know what I'm doing. I think that's just really hard to accept that I'm not going to be like a perfect parent and my kids are going to be like, I wonder why mommy told me that and just a whole bunch of other things. <laughs> yeah. It's just really stressful trying to figure it all out. It would be really nice to have a manual. Like, yeah. when I was right. Teacher, that would be great. I know people say it, but. <laughs> Like when I was a teacher, I had a list and my, like a rules, like if you did this, you had, you know, this punishment, if you, this happened, you had this punishment. And mm -hmm. um, that would be nice as a parent. For I, was I mean, there's those parenting books, but they don't work and they don't work because <laughs> <laughs> they kind of don't work because I mean, you, they're not catered to your child. They're catered to, you okay. know, so some aspects they will, yeah. but I think for me, the worst part is you know, you tell your child to do this and this, and you know clearly you haven't done that and that. And then the guilt of that really bothered me. And so when I correct them, and sometimes I'm really hard on them, and I, I mean, some of you know in the house, I don't play, I don't, you know, and um, so sometimes it's hard for me, you know, to, to give that out, and sometimes I just let some things slide, yeah. but then because I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I haven't done my part like I should have. And here I am trying to tell my children to do, you know, or I'm expecting them to do what I've asked them when I'm myself, I'm not uh, doing what I think I should do or what I know I should do. So that to me, that balance is very tricky because of course you want them to pick up that part of your life, you know? And um, so that bothers me. And that that's one area of my life where I'm like, ah, oh, it just aches me that, so it's like accountability through your children, kind of. That's what you say that it's accountability through your children. Because look at you with innocent eyes. Like, I thought you just said to pray before you eat. Are you eating? You know, kind of like, you know, they walk in as soon as they, you're like, oh, great. I forgot to pray. Put it back there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More like you discipline them and then you totally forget what the punishment was. And then they're <laughs> calling you out. <laughs> Or yeah. better yet, forgetting that they're still in timeout, you know? <laughs> like, oh, oh, hold on, what are you doing? Well, I'm so glad that you were sitting there nice and patient. <laughs> <laughs> it's great when they get older and they can, like, call you out on it, too. Like, I'll tell the kids, like, oh, you know, okay, you have to go clean your room. Why do I have to go clean my room? Well, your room needs to clean. So you really good. It was like, well, your room's not clean. I'm like, that's because I've been cleaning the rest of the house. <laughs> I actually was telling David the other day that in my mind, I see them sitting in, in an interview chair, like a, in a news, you know, like Savannah Guthrie on, you know, they are interviewing them. So tell us about your childhood. That plays a lot in my head. And that usually tells me how I should go. Like, and I'm hearing them answering, yeah, my mom was, yeah, she used to do like this. Like, I play that in my head. I'm like, oh my God. So I stop a lot of things because I'm seeing them as grown ups talking about me on TV, saying this to people. So that. I don't know why people, I don't know why, but that usually like, uh, I'm not going to yell right now. I'm just going to, and then, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking of my kids now as they're older. It's interesting to, to look back and see what they remember versus yeah. what I remember. Yeah. And then they'll be saying things and be like, remember this and remember that. I'm like, really? Remember that? I think the hardest part for me is like the 
disciplining like you guys were saying and the fact that you're they're always responsible like you never you never you never get them out of your head like you can never have a break really you're always thinking about them all the time mm-hmm. like tonight kevin said he came home and he's like i think you need to walk i think you just need to go walk around and i was like but if i go walk i still have to come back and like life still happens here <laughs> just because i'm gone doesn't mean that i stop being a mom what is the best Mother's Day gift that you've ever received? Hands down, last year's Ikea trip. <laughs> that was <beautiful. laughs> Yes, if you guys- Still shedding a tear that I missed that. <laughs> yeah, that was nice. <laughs> Being frog, <laughs> that, yeah. It was, and it was mm-hmm. a time where we didn't have to think and you know the kids were taken care of. Yes, I was really looking forward to that. I know. Yeah. 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 I, I have furniture I need to buy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anybody else? Time alone. Time alone is the best. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to fix dinner or think of fixing anything. Like Yes. I think you know, if someone can give you time alone but then they're waiting to have dinner. So now in your yeah. mind you're somewhere but you're thinking about that. Mm-hmm. But if I can get time alone and I don't have to think of anything. I think that's the best. I don't even need a gift. I mean, for what? You know, like, yes. just send me <laughs> out. That's so true. Yeah, just let me go. Yes. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Yeah. For me, it was last year. My kids woke up early, and they're sneaking around upstairs. They're not quiet, but they're sneaking around. I can hear them, and they think that I'm still asleep, so I pretend to be asleep. They go downstairs with Daddy, and they make me breakfast, and they bring it back. And Cordy was so excited. She crawls up in the bed and she's like, happy Mother's Day, mommy. (laughs) This sweet little three-year-old face. And they were so excited. John's like, oh, I was going to bring you a Diet Coke. And Malia's the one that made me make your coffee. And she was so proud that she remembered my coffee. And I was like, oh, my savior. (laughs) My hero, my coffee. I can't drink Diet Coke at 8 (laughs) a.m. My best Mother's Day gift is this year because I finally just told James what I wanted instead of letting him decide. (laughs) (laughs) For you. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I learned that secret a long time ago to email David um, what I want for holidays. Oh, wait. Okay. First of all, I feel really bad. I just said that actually. James got me these amazing coffee mugs last year with the kids' pictures on them with me oh, in the picture. Yeah. Okay. So I take that back. <laughs> I hit this part. I hit this part. <laughs> How did you get a picture with the children that wasn't you asleep? I just okay. need to know. That actually, I was amazed, but somehow he found one. So Brittany <laughs> didn't have any pictures of me on it. Because <laughs> I was looking at the same child. That's too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. One is refusing to go down as you can hear. And I'm like, not my child. <laughs> <laughs> That might be the best part of motherhood right there. <laughs> yeah. true, true. What do you think is the worst gift that you've ever gotten for Mother's Day? But he once gave me a card that he didn't write anything in it. There was no names. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, nothing. And when he sees this video, he's going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you couldn't even write your name? Like, <laughs> you didn't even write his name? Nothing. It was blank. It was totally blank. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> that is so <laughs> crazy. Wow. How is parenting different from what your preconceived notions were? I always thought I was going to be like the great mom that, like, played with them all the time, baked things and cooked things because like that's how my mom was and and now I'm like realizing like I do not like to cook with my children. <laughs> I'm like, please, please just go away. Let me throw all this stuff in the bowl. Maybe you can mix it a little. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, I've flowers on the counter and I don't know if there's actually a full amount in the bowl that needs to be. <laughs> Amelia is like such a helper. Like tonight, they all like we're making tacos. And they're like, "Can I help?" And I'm like, 
Well, not really. There's not much you can help with tacos. <laughs> like, you're like, come play Barbies with me. And I'm like, mm, really? I'm like, don't you have to that? Isn't that why I made others? So you could do that. <laughs> I think for me, it's their different personalities, um, trying to figure out the best way to discipline them because what works for Malia does not work for Cordy at all. So it's completely figuring out everything all over again. It's figuring out how they feel love when they start acting out. They're like, okay, well, you know, have I spent time with this one? Have I, you know, given this one a little gift from the dollar store or whatever their love language is, you know, am I meeting their individual needs as a mom and balancing that with three kids and being pregnant and, all of that has been a little bit like, uh, I can't do this. <laughs> yeah. I just, just recently just put that all the pieces together about the love languages with my children. I never thought about that before, but it has, it has helped so much. Um, but yes, you're right. That's very true. I mean, I guess I thought I was going to be just this really patient parent and not the disciplinarian but it turns out that's actually just kind of natural for me and my kids are responding well to me being the person they kind of come to for that structure and discipline and that's not to say James doesn't discipline but we just have different styles of parenting and I really just anticipated us having this very like harmonious two-in-one like incredible parenting duo and we were just totally not like that at all um, so I think I had to let a lot of that go when I became a parent that I don't need to be the perfect parent or even mirror what my spouse is doing. I can just be a good parent the way I know how to parent best and let that be enough. I think that goes back to what Elizabeth said about the Lord entrusted um, our children to us, but he also gave us our spouse as well. And he knows our personalities and he knows um, our weaknesses and our strengths. Um, and he uses those. And you're exactly right. Yeah, that's spot on. Yeah, we have totally different styles, and it amazes me what he can get them to do. And he's always like, "Why can't you get them to do this?" And I'm like, "I don't know." <laughs> yeah. Well, I like when grocery shopping, and I came back, and the entire living room was clean. He's like, well, "I told," and they're like, "Dad told us if we get the living room clean in five minutes, we could have a popsicle." And I'm like, "I told you you could have two popsicles if you got the." <laughs> And you still didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And I think that works in reverse too, though. There are yeah. things that John, like the other day, he was trying to get them to clean. And we have this thing with Malia, we would always get a trash bag and tell her, if you're done cleaning, we'll pick up everything else, but it's going in a trash bag and it's going to be donated to kids that won't mind picking up their toys. And that doesn't work for Cordy. So he got a trash bag the other day and he starts putting stuff in it. And he started with her favorite toy and she screamed and freaked out. And he was like, okay, one more chance. And so then five minutes later, he's still having this fight with her. I said, if I come in there, I'm going to put it in the bag and I'm not going to dump it back out. She was like, oh no, I'm always getting involved. Get it done, get it done. I was a teacher. I, I've already said that, but I was a teacher before I had children. I was a very structured, I was very strict. My classroom ran very like, I was I mean, they call me mean Miss Bass at the school that I taught at. And I don't say that with pride. I was just that structured, the rules. I'm a rule keeper at heart. And I had no mercy. Like, I didn't have children. I was just that ruthless, saint, uh, um, didn't have children teacher anyway. And so um, when I had children, I thought that would just, just can, you know, carry on. And I would be the same ruthless type of rule keeper. And um, my children would just follow in order and um, that is not, that's not how it's happened. And I think with <laughs> child, I've become progressively nicer. What's the hardest part about being a mom? Letting them learn some lessons on their own, just kind of watching them as they get older. Mm -hmm. um, wanting to go in and kind of rescue them and, and fix things for all the time, but knowing that the best thing is to kind of let them learn some things and just kind of be available if they if they need you and, and continue to pray for them for me it's learning that you're not in control like in life you know you're not in control but as a parent you're like oh well, i can do this to protect the kids and i can do that to shape them and i can be the biggest influence in their life and when things happen like with malia and her cancer 
there wasn't anything I could do to protect her. All I could do was pray that God had her because I couldn't do anything to help her. And I mean, it's not just big things like that. It's little things. It's they're walking down the street and they have a hold of your hand and all of a sudden they trip and their hand falls out of yours at the same time and they fall down and they get hurt. And you're like, I was right there. Why couldn't I protect you? Yeah. So it's just learning to trust God to have them when you can't. The other day we were talking about <clears throat> some teenagers that were in Kevin and I's youth group and how they <clears throat> have grown up now and they have left church and they um, don't follow after Christ. And it really hit me when I was thinking through those, some of those teenagers and I thought, but that could be my children. And I think that to me, that's one of the hardest things about thinking about the future is that, um, that I'm not responsible They're They have free wills. They are human beings with the free will to choose Christ or not. And to me, I think that's the hardest thing I'm thinking in the future that they won't follow Christ. Um, so, um, I think for me, that's the hardest thing thinking about the future in there their decision to follow Christ. <laughs> I agree with that. I mean, you know, I know seeing that I'm from, I'm one of four and like watching how my siblings have done different things, you know, it's yeah. Worried about like, no matter what I do, they're still going to do their, their own thing. Yeah. Help. Yeah. And one of them, like, I was just, I think for me is the shouldering it all, you know, some, I feel like like you you see it you almost see it like you see your children but you can almost foresee some things you know and but you have to put that on and, and like Sandrine that then you, but also you also have to release them to make some of their choices yeah. even though you can kind of pre, pre see it um and I know like my mom has always told me she she always says she's like you know moms are like kind of like under God because you have his blood, but then your blood is the one attached, you know, to your child when you are giving birth, you know, like, so it's the blood connection too. And so she says, so you have the right, or you have the power to speak and to say things over your children or to refuse things over your children, you know, but that is still on your shoulders. Like you never get a time off. And my mom says, whether you're 50 or whatever, you're still my child, you know, like if anything is bothering you, it will still bother me because of the connection that I have, not only is it just as your mother, but also a spiritual connection. And I, and I'm like, whoo, like, holy. And, you know, and she says, that's why she, and she, you know, we always laugh how, you know, your husband is dead asleep and your child is crying, but you hear, even before they start crying, mm -hmm. you wake up, you're like, oh, please don't wake up, please don't wake up. And he's right there knocked out. He's, she's like, it's that connection yeah. that you carry with for the rest of your life. You know, I always tell Beth, I, I tell her, if I'm going through a very difficult time, my mom will call and the first thing she'll say is what's wrong. She never says, hello, what are you all doing? Is what's wrong? Because she's picked up, you know, like, like something. So I think of that as a mother and I think I'm like, oh my goodness, like it does not end when they get to 18 and they're gone yeah. out right. of the house or they're yeah. 24 and they're married. Yeah. You have them and that is your responsibility. And I have to be strong to carry this. I have to always prepare mm -hmm. for what is next. It's, 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 to me, that is, it keeps me up. You see why I think about the shows that they might be on and what they might <laughs> 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 This is where my mind goes. When people say, oh, I'm, I'm doing this to chill. I'm watching Pinterest, but I'm still thinking, oh my goodness, like what? So um, it's just, it's a big responsibility to be a mom. So, you know. Mm -hmm. We have less than a minute. It's probably going to kick us off anytime. Does anybody have anything else they want to say? Anybody? Thank you guys for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you for, for having your insight us. and your encouragement. Yeah. Um, I love each of you guys. You mean a lot to me. Um, and I cannot wait until we're out of this um, quarantine and I can see you guys again. <laughs> Good night, ladies. Yeah. Good night. Hold up, baby. <laughs> <laughs>